Hey everyone, Mr. W here. Today's lesson is on place value through hundreds. So what is place value? Uh, well, let's start with talking about a word uh, called digits. For example, 729 is called a three-digit number. Nine's a digit, two's a digit, and seven is a digit. Digits just means numbers, and all the numbers that we have, whether it's large or small, are made up of something called digits that you see in yellow on the screen. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine are called digits, and all numbers are made up of those digits. So, for example, 729 is just three of those digits. Let's look at some other examples. Five would be called a one-digit number because it's just the five. Forty-six would be a two-digit number because four and six are different digits. One thousand seven hundred thirty-eight. Did you guess it? That's a four-digit great. And you can even have huge, you know, seven, eight, nine, and even greater digit numbers. So when we talk about place value, the word value just means how much is a number worth, and the value of a a uh, digit is based upon its position. The key word there is position. So when we're looking at 729, those three digits or numbers have different positions and their value is different. Let's explode that and look at it uh, separately. The seven on the left there is not just a seven. That's actually 700. In the middle, the two is not just a two, that's two tens or 20, and the nine on the right is just nine ones. If we were to put addition signs in it, we're showing that whole number with the different place values. That's called expanded form. So every digit has a place, and every place has a name, and we're talking about place value, and it's based upon the position. So let's put 729 on a place value chart. The 9 is in the 1's place value. The 2 is in the 10's place value. And the 7 is in the 100's place value. Those three are called the 1's period. All right. Can you remember our three place values? Ready? Ones, tens, hundreds, and those three make up what's called the ones period. Okay, name the place value of the underlined digit. Okay, so did you get tens? Great. All right. Name the place value of the underlined digit. That eight is in the ones place value. How about the one? That's in the hundreds place value. Great. Okay. So when we are dealing with one digit numbers, let's just say seven, and the teacher says, well, what place value is that? The rule is if it's one digit, it's in the ones place value. That makes sense, right? Two digits would be in the tens and ones. So 39 would be in the tens and one's place value because it's a two-digit number. Three digits, like 158, would be in the hundreds, tens, and one's place value. Now, be careful not to make the mistake of sometimes putting it in the wrong place value. For example, if you had seven and the teacher said, well, what place value is that? Don't accidentally say tens. The reason why is that seven tens is actually worth 70 and not seven. So be careful not to make that mistake. So we can model uh, ones, tens, and hundreds using place value blocks. So we'll get rid of the hundreds and the tens. Let's start with the nine ones. Ones are showed with one cubes, and one cubes would look like that. So that would be nine. If we move that nine over to the tens, we use something called rods. And rods are just equal to 10 ones. And so nine tens would look like that, and it would be equal to 90, because we would pop that zero in into the ones place value. Nine hundreds, hundreds are use flats, and flats are equal to 100 ones or 10 tens. And it would look like that. And 900, remember we would read that as nine and have to fill in our zeros, so that would be 900. Let's model our original number of 729. We would have nine ones, our two tens, 
and our seven hundreds. We could also show that in expanded form. We could say that there's seven hundreds, right, for seven hundred, and two tens, which is our twenty, and our nine ones. That's called expanded form because we have our seven hundreds, our two tens, and our nine ones. And that is our three different place values to make up 729. Make sure that you line up the ones. That's probably one of the most important things I want you to remember today when you're adding and subtracting, multiplying, or comparing numbers. Uh, for example, 618 plus 25, make sure that the ones is lined up. Now you say, what do you mean by the ones? Well, the 8 and the 5 for both of those numbers are in the ones place value, and they have to be lined up. If you accidentally uh, slid that over, you would actually make the number 250 instead of 25, and so that would be wrong. And when you would add your columns, all of them would be incorrect. Make sure, again, that you line them up with your ones lined up, if everything else will line up if you line up your ones. Okay, so when we read three digit numbers, it's really not too hard. The rule is, is that we have to say the word hundred for the digit in the hundreds place value. Let me show you what I mean. The six, you would say six hundred. Then the rest of the number, you would just read like on that uh, hundreds chart that you see on the right side there. So the one and the eight is just read as the number 18. So that's 618. This would be 295 because the two, you say 100. The nine and five, you just read like you would on a hundreds chart. So that's just 95 for 295. When you read numbers with zero tens, just make sure that you skip over the tens. So uh, this would just be 200 and then you just read this as five and you can see that five on the hundreds chart there. So again, 325, we would just say 325. A couple more, 406, 183, 974, 610, 309, and 845. Expanded form just means that we're showing the value of every digit. So 723 in expanded form would just look like that, right? 700 plus 20 plus 3. Now, how did we do that? Real quick, uh, the 7 is just 700, right? The 2 is actually two tens or 20. And the 3 is just our 3 ones. So that's where we get our uh, three place values uh, in expanded form. You could also write that going up and down if you like. Let's do some problems. The place value model shown below represents a number. What number is represented by this place value model? Well, we see three hundreds, seven tens, and six ones. So we have our three separate place values in digits, right? If we put them together, we get the number 376. What is the value of the 8 in 382? So we want that 8. Let's show that on a place value chart. 382, and it's the 8. Well, that's in the tens, right? So 8 tens, remember, is going to be worth 80. So our answer is B, 80. The place value model shown below represents a number. What number is represented by this place value model? Well, we have 7 and 2 on a chart. Remember that 700s and 2 ones. If we put that on our place value chart, notice that we do not have anything for the tens. You've got to put a zero in. So our number would be 702. Which number has a 3 in the hundreds place? All right, so let's put that on a place value chart, our three numbers. And it said hundreds, right? And we're looking for the three. That's that top number. So our answer is, in this case, 391. What is the value of the four in this number? Okay, on a place value chart, it would look like that. The four is in the hundreds. And so it's, remember, not four, but 400. So our answer is 400. The place value model shown below represents a number. So we've got nine ones, 
four tens and six hundreds, which is represented by this place value model. Just make sure you get your place values uh, lined up correctly, right? It's kind of a scramble, but it would be 649. Thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, if you made it this far, appreciate it, and we'll see you on the next one.